And I was just going to give you guys a heads up, going to show y'all what, what I use, what I log, uh, what the logs look like from this weekend. Um, so I do use Holly. There's a couple other good systems out there. Fuel Tech, Fast, Big Stuff 3. Um, I'm only familiar with the Holly. Um, but anyway, I'm going to just show y'all a couple data logs. So this is the first data log um, that we made. After Galat at the LS Nasty Race, um, you know, we were struggling a little bit. So I uh, made some changes, made some tune-up changes, uh, made some suspension changes, and everything seemed to work pretty good. You can, you can do some edit views, and then you can set these up however you want to. You know, that's how you do it. So my first one right there is the fuel tuning, but this is my actual uh, drag race. This is my main um, data log that I look at. And also, after you make a run, if you will hit this up here, what this does is it will actually time your data log for when you let off the trans brake. We're going up. Uh, Two-step was set at 4,000 RPM. I had about 14 pounds of dome pressure on it. And everything seemed hunky-dory. So the blue line, what this is, this is my timing retard on how to get it to anti-lag essentially uh, you snatch some timing out gradually and it just helps the turbo fire off creates a bunch of heat and gets that turbo spinning real fast so it, it really works well um, when you're doing that so that's the blue line pulling timing and if you look at this um this is you can see the time so this is i'm at uh minus 0.199 seconds before launch so it had 7.6 pounds of uh, boost when I was launching. And the yellow line is the boost line. Red line is the RPM, of course. And so I've got a PTC converter with that 355 gear. And so it flashes on up. Um, you know, it, it left pretty good. It did have a 114.60 foot. So that's not bad. I mean, you know, for the tune-up I had in it. That converter goes flat a little bit here. Uh, that's just where it's rolling the converter. You know, the gear is trying to catch up to it and then I get some RPM climb. But check out that boost curve. Um, it is super lazy. The green line is the line that I was, you know, targeting full boost. I targeted full boost at 1.8 seconds. And um, right here it had 28.4 pounds. And then out here in top gear, I, knew, I noticed it felt a little bit lazy early. And, um, you know, it run decent, run a good, good ET for the most part, but up top, it was pulling pretty good. Um, then it started coming on up and down here, down track, made 39 pounds of boost. Uh, so it felt pretty good. Had 45 pounds of dome pressure. Back pressure was 42. So there again, Jose's turbo is doing work. Um, along with little John's camshaft, it's got specs on the, the lobes. So that thing's working good just a little bit over one to one. You can't really ask for, for much better than that. But so this right here though, this was concerning. Uh, when I got back to the pits, I was like, well, why was my boost curve so lazy? I mean, generally my boost ramp is about two tenths of a second behind the, uh, the, the commanded. So, but it wasn't at all this time. I mean, it was way out there. So that's where I had the failed wastegate. Um, and that's where you, if you looked at the other video from the race uh, where we had the wastegate apart, what happened is that that's an eBay style weight wastegate. So it was, you know, one of the cheap wastegates. The piston got cocked sideways. It had two set screws in it and one of the set screws come out. And so when the set screw come out, it allowed the, the piston to cock sideways and it stuck open. And so when it was on the trans brake, the valves were open. And then when I started cramming the dome pressure to it, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't close. And also, since the set screw was out, it was leaking CO2 through the set screw to the to the bottom side of the wastegate, which was then going into the, the turbo. So the motor was ingesting CO2. Um, but I mean, overall, it didn't run bad um, for that. So we got the, the wastegate fixed, come back up for the next pass. This was the first round where I had David Farlow and the car run really well on this pass. Um, we, we got to the staging lanes, um, tweaked it up a little bit, really didn't know what was going to happen on my boost curve. Um, didn't know what the car was going to take. I knew the track was really good. 
I had a guess on what was going to happen, but, uh, you know, it's, it's always a guess. So I knew I needed to run good against David Farlow because he, he's had some, some good runs. So there again, um, turned the launch boost up just a tad. I think I turned it to 4,100. You can see it's getting there bouncing a little bit. Um, launch boost, same thing, target 14. But since I had a, another 100 RPMs is in it on the, on the launch, it did make 8.3 on the leave. And it rolls on up, same thing. Um, starts making good boost early, which is exactly what I wanted. Rolls the converter, goes up to 8,400, 8,500, 8,500. Um, and I shift this car manually. I don't have a, a electric shifter or air shifter on it. Um, I just like to shift it manually. Shift light comes on, I think, at 8,200, 8,300. And then I just pop it into high gear. Uh, sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I get a little bit early, but it's just part of the driving for it for me. Now, there are times where I can't wait to get my hand back on the wheel after I get to shift, depending on what the car is doing, but um, I do shift it manually. Um, so I was commanding full boost. I turned the dome pressure up just a tad. I was commanding uh, 50 pounds of uh, dome pressure, uh, and it made that 50 pounds of dome pressure, made 39 PSI um, at that point. Um, back pressure, again, was 45 so it was still one to one. And then when you look at it, I had the ramp was for that 50 was a two second ramp. I basically didn't do anything early in the run. Um, I, I didn't know if it, how much the, how much power, if it was going to wheelie or if it was going to, you know, knock the tire off. So basically I just, I took that ramp previously, left everything essentially the same other than the launch boost early. And then I just uh, ex extended it out. So it went out to a two second ramp. And I do get a boost creep down there on the big end. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, I've got two 60 millimeter wastegates. What I wish would happen is it wouldn't get any boost creep and I would get that maximum boost at this point right here. But it's still got some tuning I gotta do on it. So it, that may eventually happen. Uh, converter falls back to about 7,600 RPM and then it just rides out right there. That's that 355 gear. Um, 50 pounds of dome pressure. And then at the very top of the track, it made 43.6 pounds of boost. And then I run it a little bit past the eighth mile. Uh, it's hard to judge. I so say you're always a little late when you when you let off. But it made 44 pounds of boost at the very, very top. Uh, dome pressure, uh, 50, 44 pounds of boost, and back pressure was 49. So, I mean, that's stellar. That is superb. Uh, you know, with the, I mean, that turbo is not even close to being done. Um, I mean, my motor is small. I've only got a, 364 cubic inch motor so i don't i mean i don't know how much boost i can make with this thing i mean 46 is a lot it sounds like but i mean you know i i just don't <laughs> i don't know how much i'm going to try to make with it i probably need to turn it down and keep blowing it stop from blowing it up so i squeaked by david farlow um that was a good race uh made it to the um to the finish line got shut down come back um, we had a very fast turnaround time. Um, so uh, next round, I had uh, Tim Huddleston. So, um, you know, knew I needed to turn it out up for him. He was going to go really fast. And um, so I did. I put a little bit more dome pressure on it. Uh, tried to get it to leave a little bit harder. And it did. It, uh, it took it. You can see coming out, I left the uh, launch RPM about the same. Uh, boost and you can see what what I do with the with the timing is once I get to uh, This one I've got it at 8 psi then I put all the timing back in it and that kind of levels out your your launch boost That just makes it a little easier So it doesn't you know skyrocket and run away on you when you got those nitrous cars or blower cars over there trying to hang you out If you happen to go in first Tim actually went in first and as soon as we pre-staged I went ahead and uh, brought it up and uh, for some reason, it, the, the, I don't know if they, maybe it was because we got hot lapped and the transmission fluid was a little hotter. Tim bumped right in and I got mine up and I, I got on the chip and I, I start bumping it usually as soon as it gets to the converter because only a second, second and a half and I'm, I'm at launch boost. And um, so I started bumping it and the car wouldn't move. It was barely moving. I have a pulse leash on mine and I love it, but it was, I think the, with the converter, with the fluid being hotter and you know, it's just, it wasn't as torquey. The converter wasn't as tight because the fluid was hot. 
I think that's why it didn't bump as good. And so I had to bump it several times to get it finally go in. And I finally got it in, got it staged up, and it left on 8.5, 8.6. And so then I increased this boost ramp. If you look at the ramp, I, I now had 55 pounds of dome on it, and I shortened that bad boy up. I had it at 1.8 second ramp. So it was significantly shorter. And so you can see it come up, and it made it to uh 1.45 seconds and um it was up on the back tire it was driving left a little bit um so i, I had to pedal it and so when i pedaled it um you know i pedaled it at 1.45 i couldn't see tim i think he had some issues but i couldn't see him so i i swatted the gas really hard and really fast and so when i pedaled it right here it was already at 36 pounds of boost at 1.4 seconds now, this thing was, it was getting, I mean, at 0.8 seconds into the run, it had 25.8 pounds of boost, and that is a lot. I mean, that is a whole lot, and that's why it was climbing, uh, and we put some weight on it in between rounds, 20 on it for this pass, and so it was it was still coming up, and it was coming, and so I had to pedal it, swatted it real good, but I think this is where I went wrong, and this is what damaged the 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 motor. Uh, when I swatted it, so it went down at 1.5 seconds, and then it come right back up. So within a half a second, it went from 36 pounds of boost, no boost, and then back to 42.3 pounds of boost. Um, now, I got my oil pressure and stuff on another screen. Um, that's over here. Didn't lose any oil pressure. I mean, oil pressure stayed consistent. It dropped down a little bit. That's just because the RPMs dropped. But um, overall, I mean, the I think that's what upset it. Um, put a lot of load on the on the rod and the mains, and you know, it just it just was not happy at that point. And you can see as in the previous screens, you can see how RPM just went on up and it stayed up. And RPM, I, so I shifted it as soon as it come down. As soon as, as all it all happened about the same time. So when I I, I pedaled it real quick. And then I shoved it in high gear, and this is about the time it loaded the motor good. And you can see this RPM curve. It just starts going wacky. And when you're looking at it, you can see these big dips here. I didn't really feel it lay over in the car. It felt a little funny. I didn't know where Tim was. I knew he was coming or he was, you know, getting pretty close. And so I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, other than stay on it. Um, RPM had dropped down, but the car was it was still pulling good. I mean, it was, it was going, um, you know, but I, I didn't have... There's no type of safety in here that could have called a mechanical failure. I do have some safeties built into the system, but it, I mean, it's one of those things that just, it laid over and knocked over and, you know, that, that track, six, there's 46 point, it, it piped, uh, spiked out at 46.9 pounds of boost. Wow, that's a lot of boost. There's almost 47 pounds of boost. Um, you know, back pressure, and if you start looking, if you look at back pressure, Back pressure is over here where I'm, I'm monitoring this. Let me turn that, that on. And you can see how back pressure kind of come up real good. And then, you know, there again, it was normally going about one-to-one, -one, a little bit over. But we start getting these spikes in back pressure. So 52 PSI there. And then it drops 45, 49, 48, 42, 51, 39. And then the back pressure starts really going down. Boost pressure is up, but dry pressure is down. So that just, I mean, that just confirmed something was, you know, up and happening with the motor. Um, now, a lot of, um, I need to figure out how to do it on mine. I've got the Holly HP, so I don't have a lot of inputs and outputs left. They are mostly all used up. But um, wheelie control, there are a lot of people out there now, they use electronic measuring sensors. And so what happens is when it gets to a certain height, it starts pulling timing out. And then that timing being pulled out, it just lets the nose of the car come back down. You never have to take your foot off of it. So, you know, that's something I'm going to figure out how to, to get in my car. And, you know, hopefully I got enough inputs or outputs or maybe time to get a dominator so I can have more inputs and outputs. Um, but, you know, there, there it goes. And then, um, you know, it come down and, you know, a couple seconds after the run, I always, you know, start slowing down some. There again, nothing was funny. It didn't feel funny. Um, everything seemed to be fine. And and then I killed the power there. Uh, killed the power as I was slowing down. So let's look at that oil pressure screen. Um, make sure. Yes, the oil pressure stayed nice and consistent that whole way. It never dropped down. Normally, in that Darlington, luckily Darlington is a very long track. So you don't have to get on the brakes real hard. 
I mean, even when I shut it down, I mean, it had 40 pounds oil pressure. So, I mean, there was definitely no issue with the oiling as far as, like, with the oil pump or any issue there. But, um, so something else that Holly is really good, um, you can compare data logs. So, check this out. So, this is the the run previously that I did not pedal it, um, and I was able to go a pretty good ET in mile per hour. But at that same, at that point where I pedaled it, comparing the two, it had four more pounds of boost. It had 36 pounds of boost when I had to pedal it. And when I didn't have to pedal it, it had 32. So it was going to be on a lick. It was going to be another personal best. Um, you know, it's one of those things, though, it happens. Um, it doesn't go always like, like we want. But anyway, I just want to show you all these data logs. Um, you know, let, let you take a look at them. Uh, see what you know, we look at what kind of information we look at. So if you guys don't mind, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I hope you go fast and get lots of wind lights. Thanks.